Tony Broom Ministries welcomes you for the following teaching session from God's Anointed Word. Our scriptures come from 2 Chronicles chapter 33 and 2 Kings chapter 21. The title is Manasseh the Wicked. Our session today is about a man named Manasseh. Manasseh is a common name in Israel. The first time you find it was Joseph. He was sold into slavery in Egypt, as you know, and he was there and he took him a wife and got married and they had two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. And Manasseh was the son that he said, I had Manasseh, he helps me to forget the labor of my father's house. And that's what Manasseh means, forgetfulness, or he that is forgotten. Now the second part of that definition would fit the man that we talk about today. He that is forgotten. Well, he wasn't forgotten in a way, but he was remembered for bad things. He was remembered for the life of evil that he lived. He was one that you don't want to remember. You want to forget him because he did so much evil. In fact, that's the title, Manasseh the Wicked. Sin brings destruction, but repentance brings transformation. The Bible tells us about the way of the transgressor is hard, and it talks about sin being a ruination for any people. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a destruction of any people. Sin will take you further than you want to go. It will leave you longer than you want to stay. And it will cost you more than you want to pay. Our golden text is 2 Chronicles 33, 12. When he, Manasseh, was in affliction, he besought the Lord his God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers. I don't know why in the world God wants to put up with us. And why in the world... As a song says, a Christmas carol, ornery people like you and I, why God would have anything to do with us. And especially since we have sinned and broken his heart the way that we have. And we have just kicked against the pricks, like he told the Apostle Paul. We have gone against God. We've done everything in the world against the Lord. And God is just like sitting up there in heaven itching for us to get right with God, to come clean with God, and He wants to forgive us. Not that He has to be talked into it, not that His arm has to be twisted. And some people say to God things like, well, Lord, you're obligated by your word to do and so and so, and I'm saying God's not obligated to us for anything. He doesn't have to have a thing in the world to do with us. And He is the one who gave us the word. He's the one who spoke the word to us. And thank God for the mercy and the grace of God that causes us to have a place in the house, to even be able to get our foot in the door, to come to a house like this right here and to be able to get our foot in the door without being blown away or condemned is an absolute miracle. And yet we get so used to being here that we find fault with the temperature, that we find fault with who's doing what, that we have all these complaints and things and we need to think about the thing. There was a time when Gentiles like you and I were not even permitted to be in the temple at all. And we have the opportunity to come clean with God and we are in such a good shape as far as like this man here was. The first part talks about Manasseh forsakes his godly heritage. He had one of the godliest heritages because his father, Hezekiah, was a good king. And he restored Judah and Jerusalem, their worship. He ridded the land of idol worship and he encouraged the priests and the Levites and he did so much good. He restored Passover and the praise and the worship and prosperity, all these things took place under his reign. He 
got real sick and he prayed to the Lord and God added to his years, as you know, 15 years. Well, that sounds like a wonderful thing. But during that time, as he got better and evidently him and the old lady got together again and lo and behold, Shazam, I'm pregnant again. Here comes a guy by the name of Manasseh. In chapter 33, verses 1 and 2, Manasseh was 12, and I have quotations around the word 12, because that tells you that during that time, that 15-year period, that Hezekiah was permitted to live 15 more years, and during that time, they had Manasseh. Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 50 and 5 years in Jerusalem. He was one of the longest reigning kings in Judah, in Jerusalem. He reigned 55 years. He could have used all those 55 years to keep on doing what his father Hezekiah had done. He could have kept on praising God. He could have kept on worshiping God. He could have kept prosperity in the nation. He could have been one of the most prosperous kings that ever was. But he, instead of doing that, he turned and he did everything he could to go against everything that his father had done. He was 12 years old when he began to reign, so that means within two years of the time that Hezekiah was healed, the child was conceived and he was born, and so he was 12 years old when he began to reign. So during the time that Hezekiah, when he passed away and finally did die, then here is Manasseh at 12 years old taking the kingdom. 12-year-old kid ain't got no sense enough to take the kingdom. For one thing, there were those who were younger than that who ruled, and they had tutors and all that. But this, he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, like unto the abominations of the heathen whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. He did not do that which was right. He did like the heathen of those who are around him. You and I have got to do differently, brothers and sisters, than the heathen around us. We're no better than they are as far as humankind, but we've got to live better than they do. We've got to have a lifestyle that is better than theirs because Jesus said in the New Testament, if your righteousness does not exceed that of the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. You and I have got to make a difference. If our life is no different than the world, then who is it? The Savior. What is his power? Who is he more than anybody else? Jesus is God Almighty, and he has power to save and to redeem. And when he does that, it makes a difference in our life. This Manasseh, he built again the high places which Hezekiah's father had broken down. He did all these things. He built altars for Baal. He made groves and worshipped the hosts of heaven got involved in astrology, worshiping the sun and moon and stars and the planets. He defiled the house of God with altars and images and idol worship. He caused his children to pass through the fire, which was an abomination that God condemned. He observed times and used enchantments and witchcraft. He got involved and dealt with familiar spirits and wizards. So Harry Potter was not the first to come along started way back yonder and it's an abomination you might think these things are harmless that they don't mean anything but they are corrupting and condemning the minds and hearts of our young people and people that are not so young he wrought much evil in the sight of the Lord and he did everything he could to provoke the Lord to anger even setting a carved image in the house of God polluting the temple with a carved image and we read about the abomination that causes desolation in the book of Daniel. And Christ referred to it in Matthew chapter 24 in the tribulation period. That's what the Antichrist will do. He will bring this image, the abomination that makes desolate. will set it up in the temple. He'll proclaim himself as God. We see a foretaste of that in Manasseh. So Manasseh made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to err and to do worse 
than the heathen whom the Lord had destroyed before the children of Israel. Here we see him absolutely going against everything that he had learned. Certainly he saw enough of Hezekiah and enough of his humility. God had brought him to humility even though he made a mistake. He showed the ambassadors of Babylon his treasures. He shouldn't have done it. They came through with an iPad and they took notes and got everything they could do. And Isaiah said, why would you do it? He said, well, I was so proud of what God had done for me. He said, you shouldn't have done it. There will come the days when they'll take everything you've got. They'll take it to Babylon. They'll take your children. They'll take the people. They'll make slaves out of them. Oh, that word of the Lord is good because it's not going to happen in my days. We get concerned about our days. As long as I have my steak, as long as I get my little chicken livers from the golden skillet, as long as I get my bogus jangles biscuit, I'm not worried about people after me. We need to be concerned about people after us because we've got a world that's on their way to hell. Just like here, God pronounces judgment. God is a merciful God, but He has to judge sin. In 2 Kings chapter 21, verse 10, And the Lord spake by His servants, the prophets, saying, Because Manasseh king of Judah hath done these abominations, and have done wickedly above all that the Amorites did which were before him, and hath made Judah also to sin with his idols. Therefore thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Behold, I am bringing such evil upon Jerusalem and Judah, that whosoever heareth of it, both his ears shall tingle. I'm telling you, this was so drastic and bad of a judgment that was coming upon Jerusalem. And God hated to do it. It broke his heart because God loves Jerusalem. And I want you to know that God still loves Jerusalem. Thank God for a president who recognizes that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel and it's the center of the kingdom, the hub of the kingdom that's coming to this world. And that's where the kingdom will be set up. And Jesus will return to rule and reign on David's throne in Jerusalem. That's where it's happening at. And as far as God is concerned, it's not Washington, D.C., but it's Jerusalem, which is the capital of the world. And thank God for a president. Thank God for a nation that will recognize that. And whether they recognize it or not, it's still true. Because God's word is always true. And God has a heart for Jerusalem. He said, this is the place where I will put my name, where I will set my name there. This is a place that you'll come and offer sacrifice. This is a place that David ruled. This is a place that Jesus came. And of course, he was in the temple there in Jerusalem and he was crucified outside of Jerusalem. And he'll return again to the Mount of Olives. He'll return and rule in Jerusalem. God loves Jerusalem. But he has to judge sin. Your ears, both of your ears will tingle when you hear about the judgment that God pronounces this judgment upon Jerusalem. You know what? According to verse 13, it's not in your printed text, but God has a little humor. Now, we've been talking about Manasseh and it's kind of hard to talk about this. It's so morbid and so down in the mouth and he's such a wicked, spoiled kid and you hate to keep on talking about the bad things he did. So God has a little humor in verse 13. He proves by this verse that Really, it's not women who ought to be washing dishes. Fellas, it's the men. Woo! Right there in verse 13. I will wipe Jerusalem like a man wipes a dish, wiping it and turning it upside down. He ain't said nothing about no woman. So the man wipes a dish, turning it upside down. Ladies, you got to love it. Fellas, eat your heart out. Woo, what can I say? Verse 15, but... Because they have done that which was evil in my sight and have provoked me to anger since the day their fathers came forth out of Egypt even unto this day. And you'll find that over and over in the Bible where God tells them. Look, this didn't just start yesterday. You have provoked me to anger since the time that your fathers came out of the land of Egypt. Every day has been a provocation. And... Romans talks about it like this in chapter 10. Isaiah referred to that and it refers to it again in Romans. He says, All the day long have I stretched out my hands to a disobedient and gainsaying people. God loves Israel. 
He loves his people. And they've had opportunity on top of opportunity on top of opportunity to get right with God, to preach the gospel to the world, to show forth righteousness to the whole earth. And they will once again as a nation. But they miss so many opportunities. And they've even rejected their Messiah as a nation. And many of them individually are still doing so. They're involved in religion. They're involved in menorahs. They're involved in candles. And they're involved in the rabbis. They're involved in tradition. But they don't love Jesus. They reject Him. They don't believe that He is the Messiah. And it breaks God's heart. They break His heart every day. Moreover, it continues and says that Manasseh shed innocent blood very much till he had filled Jerusalem from one end to another beside his sin wherewith he made Judah to sin in doing that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. Again and again, we find his sins being mentioned. And you can read about it in the Chronicles and in the Kings about how he sinned against God. The thing is that God forgives sin. I know He forgives sin because I'm a living witness that He forgives my sin. And He has forgiven me. And thank God that He does forgive sin. And it bothered me because I thought about this thing. Well, Manasseh, and we'll talk about it in the third section here, that he got right with God. He humbled himself before God. And so why didn't God just do away with everything? Allow them to stay in the land and not bring judgment upon them it's because of this innocent blood God will forgive you he will cleanse you from idol worship he will cleanse you from iniquity he will do anything he will wipe your sins away but there's something about the innocent blood and America needs to get a hold to it brothers and sisters our abortion and we're talking about alternative to abortion thank God for the ministry we need to think about the fact of what we're doing with our sons and our daughters not only are they killing each other in the streets but we're killing our unborn babies before they even have a chance to be born and yet we're justifying our sin by that we are saying, oh I got rid of that I got away from that no you don't get away from it because it's a sin in the sight of God and that innocent blood that's being shed not not only in the streets of LA and New York and not only in the streets of Philadelphia but the innocent blood that's being shed in the abortion clinics the innocent blood that's being shed all over the world is blood that has to be paid for and there's only one payment and that's the blood of Jesus Christ that's the only way that you can get out from under this innocent blood and that's the spiritual thing nationally speaking as far as the civil law of the land the only way it can be accounted for is, and I know some of you may not like it, but it's capital punishment. God has put capital punishment in place in the government. If you're going to serve God and you do what's right, that's fine. But if you're not, there has to be an alternative. There has to be a deterrent to crime, and God has set that up. And that's the only way the land can be cleansed of this innocent blood. Manasseh shed blood from one end to the other in Jerusalem. And the only way it could be accounted for was to be dealt with, and they did not do it, and they ended up going into captivity because of it. In chapter 33, verse 10, The Lord spake to Manasseh and to his people, but they would not hearken. Wherefore the Lord brought upon them the captains of the host of the king of Assyria, which took Manasseh among the thorns, and bound him with fetters, and carried him to Babylon. Here he was in thorns. Here he was in chains and fetters. And now they carry him to Babylon. When he was in affliction, he besought the Lord his God, and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers, and prayed unto him. And you can find his prayer. It's not in our Holy Bible, but it's in some of the writings and the extra books that you can find the prayer of Manasseh. And he prayed to God, and he was entreated of him and heard his supplication. Not only did he say, okay, I forgive you, but he brought him again to Jerusalem, and he brought him into his kingdom again. Tell me that my God is not a faithful God. He gives us not what we deserve, but he gives us the grace of God so much more than what we deserve. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord, he was God. He began to change his life. He began to change his behavior. 
when God makes a difference in your life, you will change your life. Your life will change. Your behavior will change. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And when God gets a hold of your life, your life will never be the same. You'll never be the same again. He took away the strange gods and the idols. He took away the altars and cast them out of the city. And so here he's changing his behavior. Verse 16, he repaired the altar of the Lord and sacrificed their own peace offerings and thank offerings and commanded Judah to serve the Lord God of Israel. And so here he is. He's getting right with God. He's humbling himself before God. And that's what God wants us to do. When we realize the error of our ways, when we realize that we've sinned against God, the only thing we can do is to get right with God and to turn ourselves around. Like Manasseh and allow God to turn us around, of course. But he humbled himself. In his affliction, it says, he humbled himself before God. That's where we have to get to so many times. Before we'll come clean with God, before we'll humble ourselves before God, we have to get in affliction. We have to get in a place of where we're in bad shape, where we're in a bad way. Trouble comes. God does not bring trouble. He can. He has to. He will. He'll bring judgment. But God is a God of goodness. God is a God of grace. God is a God of mercy. He does not want to judge us. He wants to bless us. And He wants to cause His face to shine upon us. He wants us to be helped, not hurt. He wants us to be blessed, not blasted. He wants us to be lifted up, not put down. And God has all kind of good things in store for us. This kid, this Manasseh, he could have been used mightily to bless the nation of Israel, bless the kingdom of Judah and Jerusalem. But instead, he turned away from God. And he went through all this idol worship, all these evil things. He worshipped the stars. He worshipped the planets. He set up all these graven images. And he went through all these rituals and things that he did, worshipping every god except the Lord God. And he did everything he could, as I said, to provoke God to anger. And God had to deal with it. He did provoke God to anger, and God became angry because of all the things that he did and all the time that he wasted. Just think about it, and I've heard some of you testify about it. All the time that I wasted out there in the world, serving the devil, thought I was having a good time, thought I was making a lot of money, thought I was doing this and that, and I was running myself in a hole in the ground. And we'd kept on, we'd have been in a hole in the ground. We'd been in hell by now. But God, thank God, had mercy on us. And He loves us. He made a way whereby we could be saved and have life and have it more abundantly. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity to teach Your Word and to represent Jesus. I love You so much, Lord. We thank You for this Manasseh, the lessons that we could learn from him, not to be like him and not to fall into the trap of sin and iniquity that he was in. And I thank you, Lord, that you heard his prayer. And I thank you, Lord, that you brought him back to you. And I thank you that you restored him to his kingdom. And how many times you've blessed us and restored us and you've picked us up. When we fall down, you're there to pick us up and bless us. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy and your grace. And help us, Lord, to walk as Hezekiah says, softly all our days. Help us to be humble before you. And help us do what we can to reach the world for Jesus Christ. In his name I pray. Amen. Thank you for listening to this anointed teaching session from God's Word. The title has been Manasseh the Wicked. Make sure that you know Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord so that you'll not fall into the same traps that this wicked king fell into. This has been a production of Tony Broom Ministries.